Good morning, church, and welcome to our online Sunday gathering. We're glad that you're with us. And moms, we want to say this morning to you, happy Mother's Day. We trust that you feel valued, appreciated, and loved by your families and by those close to you today. And even though it's a very different Mother's Day than normal, we hope that you are going to really feel uh, the love from others around you in uh, different ways. Uh, one of the great things about being together on a uh, online platform like this and being together live, whether it's on our online.church platform or whether you're watching us on YouTube right now, is that we have the ability to live chat. And so um, I know that for the last number of weeks, some of us have come early and have had a little bit of um, conversation back and forth, which is a great way, even though we can't be together, just to affirm and encourage one another. And one of the questions that I want to ask in these days of not being able to meet publicly and uh, you know having to log on to devices to watch church why do we gather why would we bother to gather together live why would we be doing this right now and i, I want to just read something from hebrews 10 which for me is always a great reminder and encouragement of why we do this it says there and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so joining together live like this and encouraging one another via live chat is actually one way right now that we can gather together virtually and know that we're in relationship with one another and encouraging one another and affirming one another. So. I want to try something different this morning for a couple of minutes we're going to pause before we enter into worship together and i want to invite you to uh, greet one another online via the live chat and so uh, hopefully you have a device that can do that so pull out your phones or your ipads or some other device your laptops and let's let's encourage one another here with just a few words of whether it's good morning or how are you and and all those sorts of things. So, and I trust that this will be a blessing to us as we reach out to one another, even when we can't be physically together. So let's do that. And then we'll come back and posture our hearts for worship.
Church, I trust that that online greeting of one another was a blessing to you. As we prepare to enter into worship together this morning, I want to encourage us to posture our hearts to praise, to glorify, and to receive from Jesus. There's this great verse in Psalm 22, it's verse 3, and it says there, speaking of the Lord, you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And what that verse simply means is, God, you are the Holy One, and you are the one that we praise. And so I want to invite you to do that together this morning. Let's open up our hearts to praise the Lord together. We have Greg Friesen and a team from Calvary Church from Steinbeck with us this morning. They are part of our Salt and Light family. And we're grateful for these relationships with our church family in these days and that we can have this opportunity to worship together. So let's receive Greg and the team and let's, uh, wherever you are, let's intentionally gather and enter into worship this morning. Good morning, Landmark Christian Fellowship. It is a blessing to be here. As Paul, I think, already has uh, mentioned, my name is Greg, and I'm from Calvary Church. And this is my beautiful wife, Michelle, uh, joining us on keys, and my son uh, on the cajon uh, here joining us today. Uh, this is a privilege, and we're really happy to be with you here this morning uh, and getting to lead you in the praises of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, I wanted to give you uh, just, a, uh, just a really quick posture. It's actually a one posture that has two parts, I find. As we come to praise and worship, we're, we're actually accomplishing two things, if you ask me. Number one, we are entering his courts with thanksgiving and praise, which we're called to do. And it's actually what we were created to do uh, is to give him glory and expression. And this morning we're starting to, uh, to do that with music. But there's actually this other thing you accomplish. It's actually uh, there's worship and then there's war fair and you put those together it's kind of like warship you know maybe that's a cheesy joke i'm sorry about that this morning uh but you're accomplishing actually pushing back the enemy uh, i was listening to a song uh this week and the worship leader says what kind of like enemy do we you know fight against who can be defeated with a song and i was like is that in scripture really and it actually is if you think back to second chronicles uh chapter 20 king jehoshaphat is facing and and his and his his people are facing three armies, actually, and he says to God, he says, Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. It says, the Lord says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the, ad the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. And it says a little bit later on, it says in verse 21, and when, they, uh, and when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire. And as they went before the army and say, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And when they began to sing, and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, and uh, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. Church, maybe you said to yourself, I'm not a, I'm not a praise and worship kind of guy, you know what, or, or, or woman, or whatever that may be, maybe a teenager. Maybe you said, that's not my favorite part of the service. Actually, you were created to do it, and when you do it, Maybe unknowingly, you're pushing back the enemy. You're defeating the enemy. And so be encouraged, Landmark. Praise him this morning. You're sitting on your couch, wherever you are this morning. You know, you get to be in control of the volume. You get to turn it up or you get to turn it down. Hey, that, this is a good time for you. It, you know, it, it, whatever. I'm rambling a little bit. But let's, let's get on with praising the Lord, lifting our hands in praise and glory of him and pushing back the enemy. Amen? Amen. All fire with lifted hands My God is my defense I'll fight with lifted hands For He holds it all I'll fight with lifted hands My God is my defense I'll fight with lifted hands For He holds it all
Father, we come to you with lifted hands. Hands of submission and worship and praise and lifted hands of warfare this morning that serves notice to the King of Kings that He is the Almighty and serves notice to the enemy that you are defeated.
Father, we put you in the highest place this morning. The King of all kings and Lord of all lords. We acknowledge that salvation comes through no other name but the name of Jesus. You're worthy of all of our praise. All of our praise. Receive it this morning.
Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where would I run to the throne of cross of grace how great the love a strong hand that holds us
to lift you high. Jesus, be glorified. So here I bow to lift you high. Jesus, be glorified. great time of worship with Greg and the team. We're so thankful for their willingness to come and serve us in that way during this time. We have some announcements that we want to make you aware of and what's happening uh, in the church during these days. We continue to meet Wednesday nights uh, for prayer together, 9 p.m. on Zoom. And this really comes out of a desire that we have and because the Lord's been uh, putting it before us to gather together seeking the increase of his presence and the work of his renewal amongst us, both in the church and as individuals during this time. And so uh, we want to invite you to be a part of that. There's no pressure to come and have to pray. If you want to just come and receive, we would say uh, you're welcome and we'd love to have you with us. It's a great time and uh, we want to be intentional in these days and persistent in seeking the Lord together through prayer. It's also a wonderful time to see one another's faces and, and to have some time connecting when we can't meet together physically. So Wednesday, 9 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, the link to that is in your church weekly update, or you can email office at lcflandmark.com if you would like the link for that. I uh, want to also make you aware of a new devotional that we have that we've put out called Following the Way. It comes out several times each week, and it helps us, uh, the theme or the, uh, the intent of the devotional, I should say, is to help us follow the way of Jesus, live in devotion to him and his word. And so I want to invite you to check it out. It's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Spotify, and it's also on our YouTube channel if you prefer to watch a video instead. Um, we're going to take up our offering here in a few moments, but before we do that, I want to make you aware of a need that we feel the Lord has called us to put before the body. Uh, many of you are aware of Voice in the Wilderness. It's a ministry that we have supported in the past as a church. Uh, Steve and Teresa Fry, who live in Pinawa, for many years they were in Mexico working. Uh, several of you made trips down to that ministry to help. And Steve and Teresa are still very involved in the leading of the ministry, even though Javier and Christina are the pastoral couple now in charge of it. But the coronavirus has been very hard. Um, on CD Valleys, uh, the area in Mexico where the ministry is, and particularly on Javier and Christina, it's been uh, very challenging financially. And so there is a need uh, when it comes to the amount of money they're having to pay right now uh, to uh, live in the house that they rent. And uh, a number of years ago, they purchased a property actually just across from the church, and Javier has been slowly uh, building up the land and working to put a house on it. And they've um, partially completed a house, but there's still uh, quite a bit of work to do. And basically due to insufficient funds, they simply have not been able to complete the work. And due to the coronavirus and the pressures financially now in the country, um, Steve wanted to put a, a, a call uh, to see who would want to donate to this work to help them finish this house. There's about $7,500 worth of work still needed to be done. And so uh, before I, I say anything else, I want to show you a short video that they sent that shows the, where the house is at and gives you an idea of what we're looking at. So after this video is complete, we'll come back and give you the details. Estoy haciendo para mi oficina. Esta parte para una recámara. Y, y esta parte del Esta parte lo estoy haciendo con mi cocina, estoy levantando parte del muro, falta el muro. También falta el muro, falta terminar el muro. Las ventanas, las otras ventanas y hay otra ventana aquí. Y aquí de la cocina también 
una ventana y aquí me falta poner block esta parte es block y aquí hay una parte que estoy concluyendo con piedra que va a ser el baño baño para visitantes y baño para para interior de la casa todavía no lo termino lo he estado haciendo esta es la este es la casa que estoy diseñando y la parte de que son arbolitos que he sembrado y de un arbolote aquí de tamarindo eh, he estado emparejando también el chitier relleno no falta poner un, un cerco ahí para que la tierra no se vaya en la orilla y en el allá de qué lado it's so helpful to have a video like that to be able to see uh, the work that's been completed and what needs to be done and so steve is collecting funds and we felt that the lord was calling us to put this before the body as a need and allow the lord to speak to us and so we want to be faithful in our tithing to the work of the church but if you feel that the lord is calling you to give above and beyond to this work please email the church and we will provide you with the details of how you can do that so let's take up our tithes and our offerings now the details for how you can do this will be up on the screen if you prefer to drop off your tithe at the church office we are open so you can do that please email the church just to make sure that someone is around and and we can receive your tithe and we'd love to do that following this taking up of our tithes and offerings we also have a kids video this morning and so that will play right after enjoy kids Stories of the Bible. Jesus calls Peter. This is Jesus. Hey -o. Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Hey Jesus. And was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Jesus began teaching about God's love and healing people of their sickness. One day, John saw Jesus walking by and told the people around him that Jesus was the Lamb of God. One of the people standing with him was Andrew, whose brother was Simon, who would later be known as Peter. Andrew went to find his brother and said, We have found the Christ! Whoa! Ray? Come on! Simon went with Andrew and met Jesus. Uh-huh, I'm Simon. Jesus looked at Simon and said, Your name is Simon, son of John. Yes, it is. But you will be called Peter. Uh, okay. On another day, Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and lots of people crowded around him to hear what he had to say. Oh, uh, uh hello. Well, oh, okay. Jesus noticed two empty boats for Andrew and Peter had left them, and were washing their nets. Jesus stepped into one of the boats hey, Peter. and asked Peter to take him out into the sea. Aye, aye. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Peter, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Uh. But Peter said, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. Whoa! They called to some other fishermen for help. Hey, help! And soon both boats were filled with fish. When Peter realized what happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. Jesus replied to Peter, Don't be afraid. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Really? Really? And as soon as they landed, they left their nets and followed Jesus. So Simon Peter became one of Jesus' twelve disciples and followed his friend Jesus throughout his time on earth.
Kids, we hope that you enjoyed that video and that was a blessing to you as you learned more about how Jesus called Peter to follow him. We have a wonderful opportunity this morning to have a group of ladies from our church, a panel, if you will, get together and discuss a passage of scripture together in a round table type of format. It's completely unscripted and it, it is a result of them studying this passage together, which is 2 Peter 1 verses 3 to 12 and seeing what God was speaking to them and then coming together to discuss and share their hearts together. And so this is going to be a rich gift to us as the church, and uh, we hope that you really are blessed by it. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, we also, we really love the Bible Project, and I'm not sure how many of you are aware of it, but uh, check them out. You can find them on YouTube. They are a great uh, team that puts together these wonderful illustrated videos to uh, just talk about biblical truth and biblical themes. And there's a video that we're going to show this morning about what it really means to be made in the image of God. And so that's going to lead us into this ladies' roundtable discussion around 2 Peter 1, where it speaks of us there in that passage of joining in with the divine nature of God through our relationship with Jesus. What a life-altering truth that we are partakers of this divine image. So we want to watch a video that just unpacks that a little bit and speaks about what that looks like for us. And then we're going to welcome Pam, Diane, Tanya, and Jess as they get together to discuss this passage. Enjoy. So if you lived in ancient Bible times, odds are you lived under the authority of a king. And many of these kings claimed that they were oh. gods, and they would even call themselves the image of God. Meaning they had authority to tell people what to do, order things to be made. Yeah, they got to define good and evil. And these kings would often make statues of themselves, which in Hebrew were called tselem, often translated as idol or image. But for Israel, they didn't view their kings as the God. In fact, they were never supposed to even make images of God. It's exactly right. And that was really unique for that time and culture. This is rooted, first of all, in Israel's belief that you can't reduce the creator God down to any one thing in creation. But there's another reason. People aren't to make images of God because God has already made images of himself. When did he do that? Well, let's go to page one of the Bible. And the first person we meet there is God. He's the one with authority over all creation. He speaks and creation obeys. And he defines what is good and not good. In other words, he alone is king. But then surprisingly, as the pinnacle of all of God's creative work, he makes humans. And he calls all of them the image of God. So he gives all humans the authority to rule. Exactly. That's what he goes on to say. He tells the humans to subdue the earth and to rule it. And so this task that once belonged only to elite kings is here in the Bible the task of every human being. This was a revolutionary statement in its day because all humans are being called to rule and to participate in the human project. So what does this mean? I mean, how are we all supposed to rule? So the picture we get in Genesis is gardening. Gardening? Yes. Gardening. So they rule the earth by cultivating it, by harnessing all of the earth's raw potential and then making something more and new out of it. So growing food for each other. Yes, but that also includes growing families then, which become neighborhoods. And then they create communities where people are going to work and take care of each other and build businesses and cities that will expand to new places and so on. So ruling is really the day-to-day -day acts of our work and creativity. Yes, we take the world somewhere. This is humanity's divine and sacred task. Yeah, and this all sounds really nice. And humans have designed some pretty great things. But just as often we create things that cause a lot of suffering and a lot of injustice, so maybe we shouldn't actually be ruling. Huh? Yeah, so the Bible addresses this. In Genesis, what happens is that God gives humans a choice about how they're going to rule. So are they going to use their authority for the benefit of others, which is God's definition of good, or are they going to turn away and define good and evil for themselves and use their authority for self-advantage? And in the story, they choose to define good and evil on their own terms. 
And so this is the Bible's depiction of the human condition. So sometimes we pull off amazingly good stuff, but just as often, despite our best intentions, we act selfishly and we create evil in the world. And so we're stuck as mediocre rulers making a mess of things. But that's not the end of the story. So the Bible goes on and it makes this claim that all of this was resolved when God bound himself to humanity through Jesus. And he showed us what it looks like to truly rule as a human. So what does it look like? Well, Jesus ruled by serving and by seeking the best for others, by putting himself underneath them and loving not just his friends, but also his enemies. And that's not a typical way to rule. And not only that, Jesus confronted the consequences of all of the evil and the death that we have created by our messed up ways of ruling. And he takes it. I mean, he lets it kill him. And so when the New Testament writers looked back to Jesus' resurrection, they see a whole new future opening up for all humanity. Jesus is a new way to be human. Yeah, that's why they called Jesus the image of God or the new human. And not only that, they also believe that Jesus' divine life and power is now available to heal and to transform us to become our life and power. And this sounds really nice, but what does it really look like? So practically, the Apostle Paul said it looks like people being filled by Jesus' own presence and spirit, filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and integrity and gentleness and self-control. He says this is the new humanity that God wants to create in us so that we become people in whom God's image is being restored, people who will move the human project forward. And that's actually how the story of the Bible ends. It's a renewed world where God is on his throne and his servants are all around him, but they're the ones ruling over this new world, taking it into new uncharted territory with Jesus as their healer and their guide. Good morning, LCF. It is so wonderful to be with you this morning. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Um, it is good to be together, even if we can't physically be together. Ladies and I are so excited to share with you um, our discussion around 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 12, and to dive into the word together and to be encouraged with one another. So we are going to just lead with prayer. Lord, we just thank you that we can be together, that we can delve into the scripture and just be able to seek seek what you want to, to share with us and um, just pray that you will give us clarity and discernment as we share the, our thoughts and the things that you have placed on our hearts. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read 2 Peter verses 3 to 14. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way there will be richly provided for you and an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. That's end of 14. Um. So his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness, or by his glorious goodness. Uh, I really love this verse. I love all of this. It's been such a pleasure to study it and to really glean what God is saying. Uh, his divine power, I was reminded that all things are from him and to him and through him. And he's my supply. He's given us everything required. My dependence is on him for all my needs to be fulfilled. He provides for our needs, and I need to know him to have that knowledge of him for him to provide for my needs. Who do we trust? I was reminded about um, our walking through with COVID and how desperately I want to hug my people. But there's barriers that we can't even see and that are in place in front of us. Because we're relational human beings, it's been really hard. We are relational not only with each other, but we are created to be relational with God. And I'm aware how my whole being changes when I interact with him. Yeah, I was struck by um, the fact that it, it talks about his divine power has given us everything we need through our knowledge of him. And it's through that knowledge and the knowledge of him that um, keeps coming up throughout the whole chapter um, at the beginning and at the end. And it's in that knowledge um, that through that so many of these other things like that keeps us secure and through that other things can grow out in our lives and it it's not something we have to force but it's his yeah. divine power and we mm -hmm. need to receive that it's original authentic knowledge about christ and what he has and um, what he has given us in scripture, um, he's given us everything that we need and uh, to learn about who he is and to learn uh, more about him and how to follow him and how to become more like him. It is all contained in God's word. And then he has granted us this precious and very great promise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we can become partakers of that, that we can become, have the character of, of God. Um, he's granted us that, uh, that we can be partakers of that divine nature. Mm -hmm. And it's um, connected to the image of God, right? Mm -hmm. We are made in his image. Yeah. And we are invited, like part of that great, that great and precious promises is that we are invited to participate, to engage, to step into um, that. And, and um, like, like we see in a mirror or whatever, we, we see God and we want him to be reflected through our lives. Mm -hmm. And... It's through that, then the end of verse 4 talks about as we stepped into um, and engage with God, we are enabled to escape from the corruption um, of self, um, the corruption in the world that is caused by those evil desires. Yeah, yeah and... Um it says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. Mm. And then it goes on to, uh, to talk about some of those uh, other characteristics. But um, make every effort, as you had said, that if we are um, 
this keeps us from the, uh, the, the, the sin that is our selfishness. If we are putting on, if we're working toward, if we're making every effort to supplement our faith, Mm -hmm. uh, the more a Christian grows and matures in the knowledge of Christ, the more um, we can expect to see a corresponding increase in these qualities in our life. Mm -hmm. But it also means that we're spending time getting to know the source, which yeah. the source mm -hmm. and the creator, and yeah. um, that we are spending that time. And it gives us delight and joy as we, mm -hmm. as we do that. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking lots, but one more thing connected to that that I was noticing is there was a part of it that's like, oh, now I have to add this big list of things. Mm -hmm. Like right now I need to buck it up and pull up my bootstraps <laughs> and, and put these things on. But it's that, but that's what the law was. That's right. right. Yeah, yes. That's right. And it's not. He didn't. He wasn't earlier on. He's not saying, "Well, do this." Like yeah. he he's not inviting us into the law. He's inviting us into relationship yes. Yes. with yes. him and that knowledge of God. And if we know who he is and don't lose sight of what why he came to yes. earth and what he is doing and what he has invited us into. And later on, you'll see, um, he's, he's inviting us to be part of his eternal mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so if we can continue in that, then, and in that knowledge of him, these things can naturally grow yeah. in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was really struck by um, the goodness by his own glory and goodness. And when I hear goodness, I think good things. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Oh, good things. Oh, the good things. My cup of coffee in the morning is mm -hmm. my good thing. My sunshine outside is the good thing. But that's not what I, he's getting at with the glory mm -hmm. and goodness. And um, one of the commentaries I read was talking about, it's actually maybe read glorious goodness. It's mm -hmm. the attractiveness of God. Mm -hmm. uh, when I did a little bit of word study on goodness um, in Exodus 33, chapter 19, verse 19, it says, it's God talking to Moses, and Moses is pleading to see God. And God says, I will make all my goodness mm -hmm. pass before you. Mm -hmm. But it's so overwhelming, and Moses has to hide his face so that he doesn't die from the goodness of God. Because God is showing himself to Moses. The goodness is God's character. It's his image. It's the entirety of his hand on a person's life. It's the depth of God. It's the God revealing his character to us. That is what they're talking about with the glorious goodness. That is the goodness of God that attracts people to him. And that is part of the promises that God is giving us. That he's given us everything through his glory, glorious goodness, through the knowledge of him, his divine power. Mm -hmm. I was just really struck by that. that mm -hmm. um, it's that goodness that is so overwhelming, but it's so attractive, and it, is, it just fills you mm -hmm. to full mm -hmm. and overflowing. Mm -hmm. um, going back to verse 2, is that where you're yeah. headed? Yeah, I was going to go back to verse 2 yes, and back to say, verse. <laughs> it, it says in, in my one yeah, New Living Translation, it says, may God bless you with his special favor and wonderful mm -hmm. peace as you come to know Jesus our God and Lord better and better. And I like mm -hmm. that that translation said mm -hmm. better and better mm -hmm. because it's how do you get to know somebody by like going to see them more often right That's like right. it's it's that time spent and and that he has that he has a special place for us that he that that mm -hmm. special favor is that we are his children that he wants that that close relationship with us mm -hmm. and then the wonderful peace like wonderful mm -hmm. peace is i i don't know we've been just talking more and more about peace in our home and peace mm -hmm that we don't need to be fearful when we go out, that we don't need to be fearful when we go and see 
see people, see things, and that we can have peace in knowing God, peace coming from knowing God, and that that is something that's, yeah, it's, and it's an encouragement. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, and I think that kind of like leads up to everything else that it goes on to say, and then knowing that this doesn't just come just because you're with somebody. It comes from from getting to know him. And uh, Romans 12, 2 talks about, mm. don't be transformed by the world, but be, tra yeah. be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm. And by that by testing you, that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm. And that's how all of this comes into play. And as that we're being tested but not just now we're being tested continually like we're going to be tested next year in, in our emotions and whatever goes on and what next year looks like but that these are the things to go through and to be able to walk into each day and not into just right now or just tomorrow or yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love the called but called us it's a redemptive work I'm called not by anything that I do or anything that I achieve, but by his goodness and his grace. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing because mm -hmm. I am so broken without Jesus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm called into his divine nature, which is not broken, mm -hmm. which is whole. And he's called us. He's called me. He's called all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I just love that, that it just hints at the redemptive work that he's mm -hmm. always doing with us. Um, live in harmony with uh, God's divine moral character. I was reading um, about what that kind of meant, where you're, you know, um, virtue. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a desirable character, qualities equals excellence. So it's, it's all those qualities together um, that equal virtue or equal excellence. And I guess... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that we can be partakers of that, going back to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Greek for supplement is to add to with extreme generosity. Hmm. So when we talk about these next three verses, we're adding to our faith with extreme generosity of goodness, of self-control, of knowledge, of endurance, brotherly affection, and love. We just want to go into these um, separate characteristics and break them down together and just talk about the, what that looks like for today or every day, how that looks in, um, in the scriptures and how, do we, how can we continue to work on these things. So, yeah. Faith with goodness. So virtue, um, like it said, is good quality, high moral standard. Um, and I think um, what I think maybe what we need to also be mindful of that I don't believe that these characters are one building on top of the other. That's right. Um, these are characters that uh, come together or that they um, grow almost there's an increasing and a you know simultaneous growth of these as we uh, grow in our um, devotion to God and as we seek him um, and as we you know as that faith becomes concrete in our life this is this is um, one of the things that growing and increasing in these in these things is evidence of that mm -hmm. faith and mm -hmm. so um, it, yeah it's an encouragement to to grow in these things mm -hmm. to grow in knowledge is facts or information um, even to understand know the source mm -hmm. of, our, of who God is knowing the source of our faith yeah. growing in mm -hmm. that yeah. and how do we do that mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it comes from intimate relationship. All this comes from intimate relationship with the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. We're relational beings. Um, mm -hmm. The knowledge is what I know about Jesus and what I continue to actively learn about Jesus and God. Mm -hmm. 
Father and the Holy Spirit, would I continue to, um, in order to grow in Christ-like goodness, I need to have a hunger and a knowledge and a desire to grow in the knowledge of Christ. Mm-hmm. Because it all comes together. Right? Like, mm-hmm. to grow in virtue, I need to grow in knowledge. And I, w- I was seeing, too, then, I mean, I know you, you said, and I, I would agree, that these things don't have to, or they don't necessarily come in order, like, now I have attained this certain level, um, but, but I do see that in some ways they can build mm-hmm. on each other. Um, and what I was seeing is that as, as you deepen your knowledge of God and who mm-hmm. he is, and are in the word and realize what you have been given and the promises, I don't know. I think that equips you to have Mm -hmm. more self-control because Mm -hmm. you're like, wow, this life is not mine. And, And you are not bound in the same way. You do need to control, but at the same time, because you realize what you all have, there is the ability to have more Mm self-control. So it feels like, I mean, from the outside it might be, well, oh yeah, they have all of these laws they need, or the rules they need to abide by. But at the same time, there's that self-control. And then out of that self-control, maybe that ability to persevere Mm -hmm and continue through Mm -hmm. those hard times, whether it's COVID or some other challenge you're dealing with in life. And as you're dealing through that, I think God can refine areas of your life Mm -hmm. and produce that godliness. Mm -hmm. And out of that, when you go through and walk through some of those Mm -hmm. things, you're able to be more empathetic. Mm -hmm and be more kind maybe to your brother and offer offer a shoulder to cry on mm. and the depth of love that you can then offer and it feels like oh i should do all of these things for all of these people but at the same time that it's a stepping into freedom that mm. your life is not yours mm. Right? It's it's mm-hmm. God's and, yeah. and He is through us and He is working through us. Again, going back to those initial verses, mm-hmm. verse three and four. His divine power and his glory and goodness. And those are working in and through you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that reminder of that. I think um, especially relating to now and and everything that, that kind of reminds me of at, at work. I am a nurse in a hospital and things are constantly changing. There's constant changes no matter what the day, even if there isn't evident changes everywhere else, but how everybody comes in so overwhelmed by just, okay, what do we have now? And they're just feeling very all over the place and that there's no steadfastness. There's no... Mm just normal Mm -hmm. because there is no normal and and that's with all of us there's just no normal and how how (laughs) how some of the nurses come on in the morning and they are like tell me what happened now Mm -hmm. like and it's like you know what it was an awesome night it was great and they've been really overwhelmed by peace Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I've been able to like peacefully say you know what Things are gonna change, but it's how we can look at it and where do we find our peace? <laughs> and it's yeah. been good ways of yeah. mm-hmm. okay, well, let's let's walk in. We're not alone. We're all in it together. Yeah. But let's find our peace and our steadfast here, and not yeah. in this dysfunction of everything. And I mean that goes for our daily lives as moms Mm -hmm. and where every day is different because of how the kids gonna handle Mm -hmm. schoolwork, how are they going to handle not being able to go on a bike ride or something. (laughs) And that we can walk in that piece of okay, where are we putting our trust in? Mm -hmm. Where where do we find our solid ground? Because that is where we need to find our solid ground. And that's how we can walk in and through all of these things 
in knowing the goodness and knowing that we need to have self-control in our emotions and self-control in yeah. how mm-hmm. we walk out our days and that mm-hmm. we can endure and that we can endure and mm-hmm. walk in and forward yeah. in each day. Yeah. One of the one of the characteristics as I was studying them and I, I um, went to the dictionary to look at the meanings of them but the steadfastness um, really struck me. It's resolute, uh, dutifully firm, unwavering, mm-hmm. um, faithful, mm-hmm. committed, and it says unwavering through difficulty. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, that, you know, I think we can relate to that on many levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Through difficulty, we all have a variety of difficulties that we are going through, if nothing else, that we jointly understand this mm-hmm. uh, time. Yeah that we are in right now and and to really resolutely dutifully firmly unwaveringly we are concrete in our faith and mm-hmm. what you said too about where is our hope and in yeah. and and that it translates into a a life of more peace less anxiety um, just mm-hmm. knowing that we have a source mm-hmm. that yeah. to go to and who has given us these mm-hmm. things. Well, going back to what you said, Tanya, and, and off of Diane, like if you go on to verse 8 and 9, mm-hmm. what you were describing mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. your workplace, mm-hmm. um, ineffective, unproductive, um, nearsighted, right. blind, right. forgotten, right? Yeah. And if you're not focused, if you're not in relationship with God and mm-hmm. that, have that knowledge of Him, there isn't that peace. Yeah. And then there are all of these different things yeah. that you were describing and that are described here. And, um, and so, again, that's that importance. Where is God? Is our rock yeah. that knowledge of him and who he is and being in relationship with him yeah. one of the things uh, brotherly affection is another one of them that I looked mm-hmm. at and it said compassion and like we're humanity we a, or a, a human uh, I guess feeling of empathy towards one another or uh, a gentle feeling of fondness a liking and I thought, okay, um, brotherly affection. Um, we want, as believers, we really want to demonstrate to one another. We have that in common. But I'm also noticing at my place of work as we're sort of placed into this area of together where um, uh, we have a small group and, and there's, a, there's a less of us working because the rest are away uh, uh, they're working at home, and finding that we're sort of finding this, uh, um, that we're, some of the the areas in which we were maybe finding disagreement, we're sort of that's sort of going away, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we are really feeling like we're a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, kindly affectioned to one mm-hmm. another. Mm-hmm. And although we're not all believers, but I feel like. I'm so thankful that mm-hmm. God is working in that way, and, yeah. and I thought to, that was maybe an example of, of of godly affection or our affection, how we begin mm-hmm. to feel a more affectionate mm-hmm. to one mm-hmm. another, and but more gracious to one another, and a bit more yeah. loving to mm-hmm. one another. To bounce off that, Diane, um, the way that this is translated, brotherly kindness, is Philadelphia. Okay. In, in, Greek and what mm-hmm. it is is the relationship the common term for relationship within a family oh yes the family unit and it's mm. mentioned in the New Testament like that um, and I thought that was really interesting because it is a different kind of relationship it's satisfying and it's mm. deep and it's true and it demands a high and a newer loyalty with one another a true a trueness of that and I was just thinking about that in regards to our church family and that's mm-hmm. why we call it church family, mm-hmm. because it really is that for me and how much I miss that mm-hmm. in all of this and how vital it is for me to um, go to the prayer meetings and to actually actively pray mm-hmm. and be involved. And that's 
been really hard. It's been hard to interact with the computer screen. Mm -hmm. I see all my people's faces, but I don't see my people the way I want Mm -hmm. to see my people. And so I find myself reserved. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. in all of this, when that is our only option, Mm -hmm. we can't just do away with that. Mm -hmm. Because then we lose that connectivity, Mm -hmm. that family gathering, that family relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was a good reminder for me. And it looks so different right now, but mm-hmm. it's, it's not a reason to drop away because mm-hmm. then we're missing part of the character of God and we're missing what God wants to do in our hearts. And, that what, was, and what God is, like God yeah. is our father and he is, he's wanting to care for us and wanting, mm-hmm. wanting us as a family mm-hmm. to be connected, right? Like yeah. we, mm-hmm. we don't need to be strife one another, with one another. We need to be together, be on the same page with one another. Mm-hmm. So we did that thing where we skipped around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I want to go back to endurance or perseverance and just touch on that a little bit about how this life is temporal mm-hmm. and it's not the eternal life that we are, it, we will have that opportunity to live in. Um, and there is hardship, you know, there's hardship with our kids and there's hardship with homeschooling Mm -hmm. and there's hardship with work. There's hardship with not seeing your people and it's hard to go to the grocery store. (laughs) There's all these different things or there's hardship. Um, but how do we be Jesus in all those things? How do we be the likeness of God through all of this? And that ties into, um, steadfastness and self-control and I know that it's easy to have super high emotions right now and how do you walk through those super high emotions do you let them control the day you know and how do you how do you focus on what God is saying instead of just letting your yourself run away (laughs) into the emotions are so high and everything is so hard um I was reminded that we don't need to do this by ourselves Mm -hmm. because we have the good promises Mm -hmm. and we have the Holy Spirit and we have the redemption and we have the atonement and the adoption of God Mm -hmm. and we have someone we can depend on for our endurance. Mm -hmm. Uh, We need to go, we want to touch on godliness. Um, that's an echo from the beginning. How we need to have practical awareness of God in our every aspect of our lives. Um, we're going to touch on that echo at the very end here. I also want to touch on the love that is in this list. And that's uh, agape love. A love for anyone. Mm-hmm. No matter who they are. It's a love for anyone. Mm-hmm. And that sounds crazy sometimes because there are people that probably are not easy for you to love. Um, but that's what comes out of our time in our relationship with the Lord. Um, I love also another um, definition said intense feeling of deep affection, a fondness, a great interest. Mm-hmm. Um, affectionate approval. I feel like, uh, first of all, uh, once we uh, have that intense feeling of affection for the Lord, mm-hmm. then I believe, as we've said before, He equips us or He mm-hmm. gives us mm-hmm. that love for one another, mm-hmm. that affection for one another. Mm-hmm. kind of continues down into verse 8 where it says the more you grow like this mm-hmm. the more you will become productive and useful in your knowledge mm-hmm. of the Lord Jesus Christ so when you know something you want to share that right like it yeah. comes out of that okay how does the Lord see this situation and how can we walk out and go forward to mm-hmm. share that because yes. I mean it brings excitement it brings knowing and like like mm-hmm. delving into these scriptures yeah. brings us the excitement mm-hmm. that 
we want to share the goodness, the goodness that we find out when we we know more. And yeah, yeah that's. I think it's really interesting because that actually reflects off of you without you realizing it. Yeah. Mm. I had an interesting mm. situation a few weeks ago where a kid that I had known for years, but haven't seen in about ten years, Facebooked my me, and just told me how much I impacted his life. Mm. And I thought he called me misfortune. She used to call me. And I was like, dude, you got the wrong misfortune. Like, I don't know who you're talking about because I don't remember. I didn't realize that just being in the work and being um, active in my faith, mm. that it was shining mm. so brightly for you. Mm. And because it actually does that, it, it affects us. Mm. And, it, mm. and it affects others around us. And that is the attractiveness of the goodness of God mm. that people see and they want to come to. Mm-hmm. And the more you're in the Word, the more you can be that uh, that light for others. Uh, in my um, commentary that I was reading, it said the Christian knowledge is not just book learning. It changes the Christian and it impacts the world. Mm-hmm. I was really encouraged by that. Uh, verse 9 is a little bit of a A wake-up call, I feel like. It says, The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. And I... I've been in this place before and I've seen this in myself where when I tune out to everything because it's hard and things are overwhelming to me that... Things go sideways for my family. My relationships with my kids go sideways. Um, And I see how this, I become short-sighted and I forget how God cleansed me from my Mm -hmm. sins and I forget his goodness Mm -hmm. and I forget these things Mm -hmm. because I didn't actively participate in what he's calling me into. Mm -hmm. And I just was really encouraged by that verse, also chastised a little bit, but if we want to know God, we have to actively involve ourselves with God. Mm-hmm. And if we want to know God, we need to be actively with Him in the Word and allow Him to have relationship with us. Mm-hmm. Um, it, if we don't allow God, I feel like we allow the devil to have a foothold in our lives mm-hmm. because things will go sideways. We're going to allow culture to influence us more than the gospel that we say we follow. Mm-hmm. And if we're not in the word, then how do we know the God that wants to know us? And I was just really encouraged by that too, to get in the word mm-hmm. and to find those times where instead of saying, I'm going to escape to my bathroom and lock all the doors in the way so no one can find me. (laughs) Maybe it's, Lord Jesus, I need you in this moment right now. I had you this morning in my devotional time, Mm -hmm. and I'm depending on you to get through this math question. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly provided for you. Therefore, I will remind you about these things, even though you know them and are established in the truth that you now have. Mm-hmm. Pam, you were going to talk about that a bit. Um, yeah, like, um, well, it talks about being eager. Like, Mm. therefore, because of all of this, you know that um, if you are not in the knowledge of God and Mm. don't have that and aren't seeking and being in relationship with him, um, then you're going to fall away. You're going to be nearsighted. You're going to be blind, all of that. And so because of that, we need to be more eager um, to... To engage 
to step into, to participate. Those are some of the words that are talked of. Participate in the divine nature. Um, that's what we've been called to, right? That divine nature mm-hmm. um, to, for the, at the very beginning, it talks of God's divine power, mm-hmm. his glory and his goodness. And that mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. he is inviting us into. And there in verse 11, it says, so that you will receive a rich welcome mm-hmm. into the eternal kingdom mm-hmm. of our Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Savior. That also hit me when I was reading, reading this. Because for me, I'm a doer. And so it's so easy to see that list of, okay, I have to do godliness. And, and I have to have self-control. And I have to perseverance. And maybe I don't have enough. He's my Savior. He's inviting me. He's Mm. calling me. He's wanting me to just participate and and revel in his image and and live in that identity of who he has made me to be. Yeah. 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 Um, And I think... Can, can I work. can I say Diane needs yes, to talk? Yes, I was just going to say Diane. <laughs> okay, you because to say there. Diane, I think you have a good way to finish us. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> One of the the as I was going through this list of qualities and things that we want to uh, that uh, we're called to, I was just so impressed uh, this morning that I feel that we as a body of believers and I was thinking of my fellow sisters and brothers in Christ there are those who I see these things and I see that we are growing in these things Uh, my heart was to go to well how can I how am I growing in this and God which of these do you want to increase in me and I am asking those questions and those are things that I want to ask myself But I also thought, I was, I really believe God put this on my mind to say, you know what? We need to be encouraging one another. We need to be saying, I need to be telling people, you know what? I see steadfastness in you. I see that there's self-control. I see you're growing in self-control. I see that there is more brotherly love, more godliness in you. And I, and I just, I just really feel feel that that's one of the part of encouraging one another, mm-hmm. reminding one another. Yeah. Um, it, because it says that we are to remind, you know, as a reminder, and that we build each other up mm-hmm. by reminding each other, yes, we are growing. This is mm-hmm. a process. Mm-hmm. We are on our way. Yes, do we need to grow? Do we need to, are there areas we need to increase in these? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I just love my brothers and sisters and I love to to encourage them, and I, I, mm. I just have people came to mind when I saw these, mm. and, and when I read these, and I thought, yes, I I am so delighted that I can learn from my brothers and sisters who have that. Mm-hmm. They have yes. these qualities; they are demonstrating them, and I can look at them and encourage them. Yeah, and uh, that's mm. what came to my mind when I said, mm. remind one another, don't mm-hmm. forget. Mm-hmm. Was there any final things that any of you wanted to add? I was encouraged by the last verse. And I will also make every effort so that you are able to recall these things at any time after my mm-hmm. departure mm-hmm. and Peter's talking to the Christian the followers. And um, I know I'm going to have to recall these things. Mm-hmm. I know that this is not just a one and done. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe even writing it on index cards and putting it on my fridge, and being like, goodness, self control, endurance, and just mm-hmm. remind my heart mm-hmm. that everything comes from his divine power and his glorious mm-hmm. goodness. Mm-hmm. Everything does. And I can depend on that throughout my day. Mm-hmm. Um, putting it on a letter board or, or whatever mm-hmm. it is, and just reminding my heart mm-hmm. about these things. Um, because they had to too, mm-hmm. and we don't have it already. We're not going to walk out the door and be 
perfect. Mm-hmm. That's not God, what God wants. It's an mm-hmm. ever growing, ever changing, ever de- deepening of our relationship mm-hmm. with Him yes. to grow in these things. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, as we, as we come to a close, I, it's been good to talk with you ladies and stuff like that. And um, I, I think um, for you, uh, church, and, and women out there, and moms specifically thinking of Mother's Day, I know for me, going over this passage, I was really encouraged and reminded of, as I'm in relationship with God, and as I grow in my knowledge of Him, I'm re- I remember that I don't have to do it by myself. Yeah. And I know, mm-hmm. especially during this time, sometimes I am more than overwhelmed at home with my kids and trying to keep the house and everything. And it's through His divine power. And yes, I make my mistakes and I get nearsighted. And, but as I am reminded, and sometimes I am reminded by someone that I know and I appreciate those reminders um, to go back to the word to go back to my knowledge of him truth and Mm -hmm. what are the great and precious promises and if I have to paste them up on my wall if I have to paste them on my heart and memorize it um, and that is a that is something we can continue to do and and um, God desires, desires yeah. us to all do and grow in. Mm-hmm. And so let's yeah. um, close in prayer. Mm-hmm. And God, thank you so much for this mm-hmm. time of conversation and mulling over your word and having it penetrate deep in our lives yeah. and help, helping us see different things. God, thank you for the reminder that you have called us Mm -hmm. you have called us not to do to a to-do list you have called us to participate in your divine nature Mm -hmm. you have called us um, to the great promises precious promises Mm -hmm. that you long to be in relationship with us You long for us to be in relationship with each other. And that eternal goal is heaven, Mm -hmm. your kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that is glorious. Mm -hmm. Um, I know in these days it is so easy to trudge Mm -hmm. and be in survival mode. Mm -hmm. God, break through that, penetrate us Mm -hmm. and our hearts shake us up and help remind us of who you are Mm -hmm. your glory your divine power and that that power that resurrection power Mm -hmm. lives in us Mm -hmm. holy spirit that you want to work through us help us to listen to you Mm -hmm. as we go through this week Mm -hmm. I pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you, Landmark, as the service winds down. Uh, I just want to read uh, first, or sorry, Second Peter 1, verse 12, uh, as you guys have been in this portion today. It says, Therefore I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder. So church, what I wanted to just say is, as a part of Calvary Church and his family uh, closing this off and singing this last song, we want to sing the blessing, and I, and I want to stir you up as a way of reminder that blessings are yours in Christ Jesus. I think the enemy wants us to forget, and I really like what Paul does there. Hey, I, I, I'm here to remind you. I'm called to stir you up. We're called to stir each other up in these truths. Because the enemy just loves to get us to forget who we are, doesn't he? Forget that we are the king of kings, sons and daughters. That we have an eternal inheritance waiting for us. So church, I'm stirring you up by way of reminder this morning as we sing this last song. That his favor is upon you. 
His blessings are for you. For you and your family and your children's children. Receive them this morning. And worship in it. Give thanks in it. Amen. Amen.
good to be together today, church, and to worship together and to dig into the Word together. I hope that it was a great blessing to you, the Word that the ladies brought. Thank you, Pam, Diane, Tanya, and Jess for doing that. We were really blessed. And thanks to Greg and Michelle and Owen for leading us in worship. We're grateful for their help today. Have a wonderful day. Mums, happy Mother's Day. Enjoy the rest of your day with your families. We'll see you again.